Welcome back. Do you want to live a life that pleases God? Do you want your life to produce something of lasting value? If so, then the section of Paul's prayer that we're going to focus on today is very relevant for you. Turn with me once again to Colossians 1 from verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Yesterday we looked at this prayer of Paul and what he was praying for, for God to fill the Colossians with the knowledge of his will, and how he was asking God to do that, through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit offers. Today we're looking at why Paul prays this prayer. What's his motivation? What outcome does he want to see? He tells us in verse 10, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. That's a good aim, but rather vague. What exactly does he mean by it? How do we live lives worthy of the Lord? How do we please him? Well, to answer that, we can refer back to the previous verse. We do it by knowing and by implication following his will. But Paul also goes on to list a number of more specific things. If the Colossian Christians and we are living lives pleasing to and worthy of the Lord, they and we will do these things. First, bear fruit in every good work. That's something that we naturally want. If something we do turns out to be unfruitful, we regard it as a waste of time. We're discouraged and frustrated. But the fruit that we look for is not necessarily what the Lord is looking for, in appearance or in timing. Some of us may have felt very frustrated and disappointed at the start of the lockdown because of what we saw as wasted work. Things we'd been preparing for and working towards were cancelled or couldn't be used. But nothing we do for the Lord is wasted if we are being faithful to him and sincere, because he will bring fruit from it in his own way. That may look very different from the fruit we had planned and expected, and it may take much longer to appear. However, if we want our lives to be as fruitful as possible for him, it follows that we need to know and follow his will for our lives, which links back to the first part of the prayer. Secondly, growing in the knowledge of God. At no point in the Christian life can we be complacent. At no point this side of our resurrection have we made it. When we've committed our lives to Jesus, that is not the end of it, because as Paul urges the Colossians later in this letter, we need to grow, developing deep roots in Christ and being built up in him. That's a lifelong process. And at any point, for all sorts of reasons, we can stagnate or drift or slip or rebel. So let's look for opportunities to grow. If you have more time than usual at the moment, use it to nurture your relationship with God and to grow. Conversely, if you're under extra pressures at the moment, then lean on Christ, draw on his strength, listen to him and follow him. If we're living lives worthy, thirdly, of and pleasing to the Lord, we will also be being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, Paul says, so that we may have great endurance and patience. The Christian life is not easy for all sorts of reasons. And we live in a culture that does not value or encourage patience. We get used to receiving and therefore wanting everything instantly. We're certainly being required to be more patient just at the moment. Well, to follow Christ, to resist temptation and the snares of the ways of the world, 
to be faithful and godly, to stand against the pressures of society, to speak out for Jesus and for truth against the many dissenting views we encounter, and for many Christians to show courage and be faithful in the face of persecution. For all these things, we need patience and endurance. And in order to maintain these, we need God's power through his Holy Spirit. What Paul's praying for is relevant, so important and so precious. And the fourth thing that we will demonstrate if we're living lives worthy of and pleasing to the Lord is giving joyful thanks, which we're going to come back to tomorrow. This is an incredibly rich prayer. If your desire is to live a life worthy of the Lord, pleasing God, bearing fruit, growing to know God better and receiving his strength to be patient and to endure, join me in prayer now. Heavenly Father, as we think of our own lives, as we think of others we know and love and want to pray for who are seeking to follow you. We ask that these words of Paul might be true for us. We ask again that you would fill us with the knowledge of your will through the Spirit's wisdom and understanding. We ask that you would work in and through our lives, that they might be lives that are worthy of you and pleasing you in every way, that we might be fruitful, growing, being strengthened, enduring and patient, and joyfully thankful. In Jesus' name. Amen.